Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all stop throwing out those old worn trimmer blades. They are valuable. We can use them. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and welcome to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. I am so glad that you decided to stop by today because I am going to kill two birds with one stone today. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Now this is one of the paper trimmers that you see me use on camera a lot. And I do use it a lot. It's really worn, but it gets the job done. The one thing about this is depending on how often you use it, you can go through the blades very, very quickly. And sometimes when we take out the old blade and replace it with the new, we throw it away. Well, we're not going to be doing that because I am going to show you a very cost effective way to reuse these blades and to kind of sort of solve another problem in the process. So I'm going to flip to my overhead camera and show you what I mean. All right, y'all, so here's my scoreboard and I recently changed the blade. And I'm not going to throw this blade out, but I don't know if you guys can see that blade. I'm not sure if you can, maybe you can, but you can tell when your blade is dull because the edges of your paper when you're cutting it will be ragged. And when you take the blade out, instead of having that pointy tip, that will cut you if you do this, it's going to have more of a rounded tip like this one. So naturally for some of us, we think that it's time to throw it out and replace it with a new one, but don't throw it out because you can use it and here's how. So when your blade is worn, just find a way to mark it, whether you mark it with a marker or you mark it with a little gem. It's completely up to you, but just find a way to mark it so that you'll know that this is one of your worn blades and you can take it and put it on to use it when you need to do what we are about to do right now. So I am going to slide off my good blade and I'm going to put on my easily identifiable worn blade and I am going to prep a piece of chipboard for easy cutting. Now cutting completely through chipboard on a trimmer like this can be done but it is one of the fastest ways to wear down your blade. So if you have a worn blade, go ahead and just put it in and give yourself a couple of passes with that worn blade because it's not really going to matter at this point. So you can just keep going through until you have pretty much cut through the chipboard. And now you're able to take your finger blade or your knife, put it in that groove and complete that cut without having to add any unnecessary pressure on your fingers because you've made passes through the chipboard with a worn blade. Now, if you don't want to make as many passes, you really don't have to. Usually what I'm doing y'all when I'm doing a onesie twosie project where I need some chipboard and I don't want to use the big cutter that I have that cuts multiple sheets at one time, I will simply make two passes to get that score. Then I'll take the chipboard and just do it like this because that's helping where I need to cut. And then I can just go through it with my finger blade and finish off. So for those of you who want to know how I cut chipboard, I do have videos in the description box that talk about how I cut chipboard. But if you don't have any type of an industrial type guillotine cutter that will cut multiple sheets at once, this is a great way to cut your chipboard for those projects that we are doing on the channel. And then once you have your chipboard pieces, you can just remove that blade store it in a little plastic container with your other worn blades. And when you need a blade to be able to cut chipboard, 
go ahead and go to that little plastic box where you're keeping those blades, pull out one of the worn ones and make a couple of passes back and forth on your chipboard and that will make it so much more easier for you to cut that chipboard and it will relieve some of that pressure that you might get when you're holding either an X-Acto knife or the finger blade, especially when you have to bear down on unscored or uncut chipboard that can put a little bit of a strain on your hand if you're doing that over and over and over. But by saving those worn blades and using those worn blades to help cut that chipboard, that makes the task a whole lot easier. So I hope that you have found this video helpful. Also check out the how I cut my chipboard videos in the description box. You'll find them very, very useful. If you have found this video helpful, please hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.